So now that we have our router interfaces configured and we have our DHCP servers serving IP addresses to our LAN clients, we need to set up a dynamic routing protocol so that the routers can learn about the different routes that are available. So you can see here in step five, we're gonna configure single area OSPF version two on R1, R2, and R3. OSPF is a dynamic routing protocol that will allow the routers to dynamically learn about networks that are available. And if a link goes down, then the routers share that information with each other so that they can adjust their routing tables accordingly. Now this is something that is very useful in a network where you have, let's say, three or more routers and having to statically configure each route can become a burden for a network administrator, especially if a route changes, then they have to go to each router and change that route. And if you have a large network, that becomes a problem. So a dynamic routing protocol enables the routers to dynamically learn about the routes that are available. You can see here R1 we're going to set the OSPF process ID to 1. We're going to set the router ID to 1.1.1.1. And we're going to advertise networks all. So that means all of the connected networks, let's say connected to R1, will be advertised to routers R2 and R3. And then do not send router advertisements out of all LAN interfaces. So our LAN interfaces are the sub interfaces that are coming off of here for the 192.168.15 network, 25, 35, 88, 98. So we're not gonna advertise or send OSPF messages out of our LAN interface. And then last but not least, we're gonna set the serial interface bandwidth to 1544 kilobits per second. So let's do that and we'll do R1, then we'll do R2 and then R3. So open up R1. Type EN for enable, conf T to get to global config mode, and now we'll say router OSPF1. That's the process ID that we're choosing. We could choose any number, but we'll choose one. All right, so router OSPF1, and now we're in router configuration mode, and the first thing we'll configure is the router ID 1.1.1.1. And now that we've done that, we want to give the networks that we're going to advertise. Now the networks that we're going to advertise are generally the ones that are connected to the router's interfaces. So we have all those VLAN networks coming off there. And then um, on the serial link here, we have a five network. So those are the networks that we want to tell the other routers about. So we'll say network 192.168.1. Fifteen dot zero space and a question mark and you can see now we need to give the OSPF wildcard bits. Now the wildcard bits are the inverse of basically the subnet mask. So if the subnet mask on the 15 network is slash 24 or 255.255.255.0 the wildcard bits would be the opposite of that so they're going to be 0.0.0.255 and then after that, we need to give it the area. So this is a single area OSPF. And so all of the networks are going to be participating in area zero. So there's our first network that we're going to advertise. And then the second network we're going to advertise is the 25 network. And then the 35 network. And then the 88 network. And then the 98 network. And then we also have on our serial interface that five network. It's the 5.0 network, but the subnet mask was slash 30 or 255.255.255.252. So the inverse of that is actually 0.0.0.3. So those are the networks that are attached to our interfaces on router R1. Now, if we don't want to send advertisements out of our LAN interfaces, we need to use the passive, I'll just use the tab key here, passive-interface command, and then give it the interface that we don't want to send OSPF messages out of. So that subinterface, and that subinterface, and that one, and that one, and that one. So there are our passive interface commands. And now we're done with our OSPF configuration. I'll type exit. And then I'm gonna go into our serial interface. 
and set the bandwidth. Bandwidth, put a space and a question mark. You can see it's looking for the bandwidth in kilobits. So it's 1,544 kilobits per second. So bandwidth 1544. This is going to help the OSPF routing protocol correctly identify the cost or the speed value of the links. So now that we've done that, I'll save my configuration and move on to R2. We'll go to R2 and in R2 the first thing I'll do is go to that serial interface and also set that bandwidth. So bandwidth 1544. So also on the other end of the link, on the other serial interface, I also want to put the same bandwidth command. And now I can exit and begin configuring the OSPF routing protocol on R2. Now on R2, we're going to advertise the 5 network because it's connected to our interface here. And this 5.4 network, which is connected to our interface here, but we're not going to advertise the network coming off of our WAN interface or our outbound interface. This interface right here is connected to our ISP in the internet cloud. And so this is outside, this is outside of our network. So we're not gonna advertise our internal OSPF networks to the ISP. So this is our outside link or outside interface. So it's not gonna participate in our OSPF OSPF 1 area 0. So this is not going to participate, just these two links. So this is really going to be a lot easier. So all we'll have to do is say router OSPF 1 and hit enter. And then the networks, so network 192.168.5.0 and then the wildcard bits and the area so there's that network on serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and on our other serial interface and on our other serial interface it's the 4 network 5.4 so there are our two networks we're not going to use any of the passive interface commands but we do need to set our router ID and our router ID will be 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2. We can double check this looking at our instructions and you can see on R2, OSPF process ID 1, router ID, which we set, our two five networks, area zero, and it says do not send router advertisements out of the serial zero slash one slash zero interface. We also need to set a default route, which we we're going to do, and then advertise that default route using OSPF to the other OSPF routers in our network. We set the serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface bandwidth to 1544, but on the other serial link, we're going to uh, pretend that our other serial link is slower than the serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 link and set the bandwidth to 128 kilobits per second. So we still have a few more things we need to do here. So first of all, we're not going to send router advertisements out of serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. So let's set that up. So we'll say passive interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 so that we do not send OSPF messages out of that interface. We'll type exit and we'll set up our default route. So we're going to set up a default route, IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 .0 0.0.0.0 out of serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. So that sets up a default route that if we do not know of the network, all unknown, all destination packets to unknown networks will go to our default route going to our ISP out of this interface. And you can see that we set that up by setting up this IP route to all zeros and then out of our own interface that's pointing to our ISP. So there's our default route. And we need to set up our bandwidth on our other serial interface. So interface 
serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, which will get bandwidth 128. And now we can use OSPF to tell the other OSPF routers about our default route headed to the internet. So we can do that with the command default default dash in let's put in a question mark here up ah, we're in the interface here I forgot that we're in the interface so what we'll need to do is exit go back into our OSPF routing process router OSPF 1 and then put in the default, I'll hit the tab key, default dash information originate. And what this will do is it will tell the other OSPF routers about any default routes that we may have and let them know about that so they can also have a route going out of the network towards the internet. So now that we've done that, I'll type exit and control C and show run and we can look at our configurations and take a look at them and see that router OSPF1, our router ID, our passive interface, our two networks that we're advertising and our default information originate command. We also set the bandwidth of our serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 interface to 128 and our serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface we need to set that bandwidth as well to 1544 and it looks like I can't see it here so let's just make sure that we've done that and now that's done so I'm going to copy, run start to save the configuration. And let's just double check one more time to make sure that our default route is in here. There's our default route. So I believe we covered everything that we needed to in this list right here. Now on to R3.